All right, chemistry students, let's take a look at uh, the concept of empirical versus molecular formula. And the best way for this to happen is for you to look at this table that's in front of you and make a copy of it as it stands now, and then press stop and fill it in. All right, and try your best. You should know. You should have seen the uh, the video on mass percent uh, or percent mass, and you should be able to finish this all off. Uh, and uh, I'm going to press pause here, and I'm going to fill it in, and then hopefully you'll do the same and come back and check it out. Okay, I hope you've had a chance to go through and try to fill out the table. Here's the answers that I have, um, and it requires you as you look through and try to figure out this table to make a few connections that weren't told to you directly. Uh, first and foremost, we have a connection between these two columns in terms of what the empirical formula is and the molecular formula is and what they tell us about. So <clears throat> first off, what is this empirical formula? So if we had to define that darn thing, I would have to say that the empirical formula is the smallest uh, ratio of atoms in the molecule. And if I was really smart, I might even say the smallest whole number ratio. So if you look at the, the very first one here, C2H2, if you look at C2H2, what you see is that if I divide by 2, this, the, uh, <clears throat> you know, either one of these two coefficients, I end up with the CH numbed out back to a small whole number. If I go to C2H4, if I divide by 2, I can get carbon down to 1 and the hydrogen becomes a 2, so I get CH2. So in, 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 in essence, I need to divide always by the smallest member of that, of that ratio. So in the, in the earlier example, we saw B2H6. So if you think about it, that one would become BH3 would be its empirical formula. So now that we know what its empirical formula is, it's very easy to go ahead and then calculate the empirical mass just by using our regular routine of, of adding that stuff up. So uh, then you, then you go ahead and you find these percent mass, which was just a practice of, this, of the earlier stuff. But it does hold some, uh, a, a glimmer of great information for us in a few moments. So I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to separate these so we can see it real easily between the two types of, there are two types of empirical formulas here. We've got the CH and the CH2s of this particular set of, of um, molecules that I've given you. And we can start to look at some things and see some trends in here. So first off, <coughs> the empirical mass is the same for everything with the same empirical formula. That should be pretty obvious. But check this out. We also see that the empirical mass, or the percent masses, are the same for anything that has the same empirical formula. So that means even though these guys are quite different in their formula, they are quite different, their formula are different, their molecular masses are different, they end up with the same exact percent mass. What that means is the percent mass doesn't give us information about the molecular formula. It gives us instead information about the empirical formula because the empirical formula, it's the same for both of these two molecules as well. So that's an important connection. The empirical formula and the empirical mass are connected to the percent mass. Okay, So that's interesting. The other thing that we need to uh, glimmer from this is that there is also a connection between the empirical formula, the empirical mass, and molecular formula, molecular mass. And so if there was a way to possibly get <coughs> some of this information, we might be able to, from per percent mass, we can go ahead and find the empirical formula. The question is, how do we go over to here? How do we get to the molecular formula? And it turns out that the ratio of the molecular mass to the empirical mass tells us what we need to multiply by uh, our, em our empirical formula by to get the molecular formula. Let's just take a real quick example. Let's take um, the 140.3 and the 14.03. That ratio is equal to 10. And if I take CH2, 10 of those, I get C10H20. So there's the connection, folks. If we can find this ratio of the molecular mass to the empirical mass, that'll tell us how to obtain the actual molecular formula from the empirical formula.